even the inferior angle. And this is a child who's has neuro, uh, I mean, has neurodiversity. All right. And again, um, what you can see is they actually have a weak serratus, but they also have some muscles that are tight, right? So it's pulling in a different direction. You want to make a comment about that, Kim? Sure. I mean, what's interesting about what falls out here is you, I mean, look at this huge space between the scapula, the medial border of the scapula and the thoracic spine. So there is such limited connectivity between the scapula and the rib cage and the oblique muscles in the abdominal oblique muscles. And what you see happening as a result is subsequent shortening here of teres. So yeah. teres minor, especially, which goes between the scapula and the humerus, but also latissimus. Yeah. Which, yeah. you know, the latissimus dorsi att attaches along the back and along the inferior border of the scapula all the way into the humerus. That latissimus dorsi is weak, and that teres minor is tight. Right. Right. And if you would see this child in weight-bearing, I mean, he's actually leaning on his arm. He's not really actually in weight-bearing on forearms. But if he was weight-bearing on forearms, we'd be seeing shortening because of that tight teres with the scapula winging.